movement on viscous is all about combining the momentum that you get from puddle punch with other forms of momentum in the game. And so the first thing we have to understand is how puddle punch works. So the knockback that you get from puddle punch is based primarily on which direction the punch is punching, but also by what part of the punch you're hit by. So if you're hit right in the middle of the puddle punch, you'll fly relatively straight along with that puddle punch, but if you get hit on the side of a puddle punch, it will hit you on more of an angle. So since moving around is all about using this momentum of the punch, if you're wanting to go in the direction of the punch, you want to hit yourself in the middle. And if you're trying to go perpendicular to the direction of the punch, you want to hit yourself on the side of the punch. I'm not really going to touch on this more, but just keep it in mind for the rest of the text in this video. Okay, starting us off with the strongest tech for movement on viscous, it is the wall roll punch. I don't really have names for these, but it's this thing. So this one is, in my opinion, the strongest because you just go flying. All you need is a wall and some open space behind you, and you can punch yourself just miles away at Mach 10. Luckily, it's also really easy to execute. The easiest thing to do is just to look at the wall, punch, and then immediately roll backwards. And then once you're flying, then you can sort of turn around 180 to see where you're looking at. But it's easy to just not even think about turning around until you've already launched yourself. So punch off the wall, roll backwards, and then turn around. This gives you an absolute ton of momentum, so chaining it with things like double jumps and slides and all of that is going to be extremely effective. And especially if you have a little bit of height, like you're going downhill, it becomes even more effective. The biggest challenge with this one is in an actual game, it's kind of hard to find spaces where it's going to be effective because you do need some open space. You don't just face plant into something behind you. Uh, but some really good ones that I found are whenever you're sieging a walker, it usually is like a perfect place. You usually have a nice open lane going downhill. You can just eat yourself all the way across the lane. In a similar vein, we have the wall punch dash. It's extremely similar to our roll but you're just using an air dash instead of a roll. I wasn't sure whether to include this, but thought I might. It's basically strictly worse in every way than the roll. So the only time you'd actually use this is when you can't actually get to the ground to roll. Like you're falling or something and you need to puddle punch yourself out like at that exact moment. You do get a little bit more momentum if you use a dash, but it's much better just to roll if you can. Next, we have the simple roll puddle punch. This is definitely the most common one you're going to use in games because it just basically gives you an extra little momentum boost on rolling. Quite similar, honestly, to just a simple dash or roll jump that you use on any other character, except you use a punch to launch yourself instead of that jump. So the benefit it has is it allows you to keep your stamina and double jump available while still getting that sort of momentum you would normally get from a roll jump. In terms of execution, it's not too hard once you get used to it. You basically just place the punch down right in front of you so that like the edge of the hitbox is basically at your feet and then you cast it and roll into it. For this one, it is particularly important to try to get hit by the end of the punch and not in the middle one. If you get hit in the middle, it will sort of kill your momentum, but if you get it on the edge, it's pretty nice for keeping that momentum. One note for this is that I've mostly used this and found it helpful for going up ramps to help conserve momentum. Since walking up a ramp will basically kill all momentum you have, it's really helpful for sort of circumventing that. You can see here, I dash and then use the puddle punch to get myself up above the staircase and then keep that momentum going forward. You can also use this roll puddle punch on ramps, which gives a slightly better angle for horizontal momentum since your punch is sort of going at a different angle and not hitting you completely up. But it's a little bit harder to set up just because getting a puddle punch on a ramp can be a little bit awkward. But just note it is an option to use. Pretty helpful when you're doing things like sieging guardians. You just have to be really careful about what's behind you because you can very easily face plant. Next, we have the wall jump plus puddle punch. This one is also quite strong, quite similar, honestly, to the wall punch plus roll. The few key differences are that one, it takes no stamina, and two, you go a little bit slower with less horizontal movement and momentum, but you get much more height. Thankfully, this one's also really easy to execute in game. You basically just jump on a wall and then right as you're about to hit the wall or as you're hitting the wall, you activate your puddle punch and then you just go for a normal backwards wall jump off of it. Now, obviously the potential for this is super strong in a real game, but it needs to be sort of labbed out specific spots to use it and it's a little bit harder to do in the moment. Probably the most helpful thing to do with it is this, where you have two buildings across from each other. You can wall jump, punch yourself up 
from one to the other one. I don't know any great spots on the real map, but I'm sure there are if you want to lob it out. Also, if you have two buildings next to each other, you can also chain these together uh, like this and just keep going and getting super high really fast. Speaking of wanting to get height from a puddle punch, if you just want height, like you're beside a building and you want to get to the top of it, the best way to do it is to jump, then cast puddle punch right under yourself, and then immediately double jump. It will combine the momentum of the puddle punch and your double jump, and you can get pretty high, basically on top of most buildings, really easily. Next we have the zipline plus puddle punch, another one I don't really use in real games, uh, but it's pretty slick and uh, could probably be quite strong in very specific situations. This is pretty simple but quite hard to execute well, you basically just dismount the zipline and then punch yourself as you're about to hit the ground to sort of conserve that momentum and go even further. The timing and positioning on this is quite difficult because you basically need to hit yourself on the edge of the puddle punch. Even a slightly different placement will mess with the momentum quite significantly. So you do need to have pretty precise placement. One thing to note with this one is just make sure that you're dismounting the zipline with crouch to preserve the most momentum. There are also these jump pad things on the map. I thought I'd throw this one in even if I don't particularly use it or think it's all that helpful. I'm sure there's some specific situations where it's helpful, but basically if you just puddle punch yourself right as you're getting hit by it, you will add some more momentum to that and go farther than it's originally intended to. In terms of items, there's only one item that really gives you any momentum, which is Majestic Leap, and it can be comboed with Puddle Punch, although the timing is incredibly slim. So you have to activate the Puddle Punch and then Majestic Leap right before it knocks you up. If you do it even a little bit too early or a little bit too late, it just won't work. But if you do get the timing right, you just go absolutely flying. Not too sure, again, how helpful this one actually is, as Majestic Leap usually does the job already, but if you want a super Majestic Leap, this is an option that you could potentially do. Last but not least, we have using Puddle Punch for extra mobility when you are in your ball form in your ultimate. Now, just a note, you do need to have your ball form maxed out so you can actually use your Puddle Punch during it, but there are some helpful ways to use it to get a little bit more mobility. First up, super standard one that you're basically always going to be using is punching off of the ground for basically another jump. This is something that I use basically every game I play Viscous in. It's very helpful, especially when escaping with the ball, especially, especially when going over difficult terrain to navigate, like through the lanes, which have a bunch of clutter and stuff you're going to bounce off of. You can just jump right over them using these puddle punches and your double jump. Similarly, if you want height while you're in your goo ball, like avoiding stuff or getting on top of a building, the best way to do it is to put a puddle punch in front of you and then combine that puddle punch momentum with a jump. So jump right as you're about to get hit by it and it will send you pretty far up and then you still have your double jump to sort of uh, navigate further. Lastly, if you want a really quick turnaround off a wall, you can punch a wall right before you hit it and turn around really quickly. Just a note for this one, you do want to sort of jump into the wall so you're not on the ground as it'll conserve a little bit more momentum from that puddle punch. Okay, that's it. I probably missed some. This is an incredibly complex character and there's tons of different things you can do with this puddle punch. Either way, hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful and let me know what other deadlock videos you'd want to see because I don't know what else to make. Bye!